Good morning, church. My name is Jason Jones. I serve as pastor for the Springfield First United Methodist Church, and we are blessed to worship with you today on this Palm Sunday. Whether you are here in person or joining us online, we pray that you find blessing through this worship time together. We begin each of our services of worship by saying together the mission of our church, which you will find on the screen. You'll also find it on the bulletin under the graphic. So let's say together the mission of our congregation now. The mission of Springfield First United Methodist Church is to love God and love people so that the gospel is shared and disciples are shaped. Amen. Uh, whether you are new here or a regular in our services, please take a moment to leave your contact details in the pads that the ushers are distributing. This helps us to just stay in touch with you and share needful information about our church, about its events, about its ministries, including ways that you can get on board. Hopefully everyone here this morning was able to retrieve a, a palm branch. We, uh, we might have run a little sparse this morning, uh, but hopefully you were able to retrieve a palm branch as you entered in. Uh, this morning we're going to stand at our opening hymn, and we're going to Lift up our palm branches as we sing and celebrate the coming of Jesus. That song is Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Uh, as we sing, some of our younger disciples will be coming into the sanctuary in procession, reminding us of that procession that joined Jesus as he entered Jerusalem all those years ago. Um, so again, hopefully everyone has a branch. I, I think I might have seen one or two stragglers on the back table. If you didn't have one, uh, an usher can help you out with that if needed. A huge thank you to everyone who helped with yesterday's food distribution that was sponsored by United Way and One Generation Away. We were able to provide produce and non-perishables to 240 local families, and I think that deserves a thank offering. That also came together very, very quickly, so I want to shout out J.C. Keller and Walt Hannibus for their dedicated efforts with that. Um, the little bit of leftover that we had uh, went to Master's Table and United Ministries, so there wasn't anything that was wasted. Uh, it's our hope that a feeding ministry like that or something similar might become part of our regular ministry, so just be in prayer that we would be guided uh, as we pursue that. Thanks also to Everyone who assisted with yesterday's Easter egg hunt, uh, we had a, a, a great turnout, including several kids from the neighborhood who aren't connected or weren't connected to our church. We also had some very thankful parents as well. Uh, we are grateful for every opportunity to reach beyond ourselves and connect with our neighbors, showing the love of Jesus. So again, to all of the helpers, thank you. Don't forget to take a Holy Week invitation card uh, we lifted those up last week. You might even take a few of those cards to distribute to those who might appreciate a welcome to our Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, or Easter Sunday worship services. And just remember that most people who visit a church do so because they've been invited. So this is your chance. Make sure and grab a card or a few. Our church directories are here. We are grateful for that. They are available outside this side door in the entryway. They are alphabetized, so you can just sort of find your last name and, and find your specific directory. They've all been labeled. If you have a photo in the directory, you can just go and, and, and pick yours up, finding your name. If you don't have a photo in the directory, but you would still like a directory, uh, you're just going to need to contact Laura, see Laura. She can get you squared away because we do have a few extras. Several announcements have been scrolling and are on the back of the bulletin, but to touch on some of those, a self-guided meditative walk through Holy Week called From Betrayal to Resurrection has been created by Lighthouse Widows Ministry. It is set up in the Jim Porter classroom and will be available for you to peruse between today and March the 30th uh, during hours that the church building is open, so make sure you stop by and avail yourself to this very meaningful experience. A fellowship in learning on Wednesday returns this Wednesday, the 27th, as we conclude our Lenten Bible study. Fellowship is at 5, learning begins at 5.30. The meal this week is chicken fettuccine and Caesar salad and orange cake. So if you plan to attend, just jot that down on the attendance pad or let the church office know by noon tomorrow. 
Starting tomorrow, we will have our midday worship each day of Holy Week. Worship will be here in the sanctuary and begin at noon every day, and will be followed by a light meal in our fellowship hall. We're going to have a different speaker every day, representing a different Christian tradition. All of those speakers are listed on the back of your bulletin, uh, but just for a little bit of information, they will be the Reverend Deacon Burns Rogers, who comes to us from St. David's Episcopal Church. He is also the lead counselor here at the Counseling Center at Springfield First. Tuesday, we will be joined by Pastor Lupe Ramirez from Fuente de Redención, our Hispanic congregation that meets at 11 o'clock on the other end of the building while we are meeting here. That is a non-denominational church. Pastor Keegan Reckinger of Upper Room Fellowship, which is a Nazarene church plant. Reverend Mark Calvert Rosenberger, who is newly retired but last served the Fifth Avenue Uniting Church, which of course is a Presbyterian and Christian church combination. And finally on Friday at noon, Pastor Ann Proctor of Woodland Street United Methodist Church. We'll also be having worship services on the evening of Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, both of which are at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So we hope that you will join us for either or both of those services. Uh, we miss something profound, and we miss something necessary if we skip from Palm Sunday to Easter. So I hope that you'll mark that on your calendar and make plans to be with us. Of course, Easter Sunday is next Sunday, and we will share two worship services, as always, our 9 o'clock service in the Moore Center and our 11 o'clock service here in the sanctuary. We do look forward to celebrating the risen Jesus with you. Easter offering envelopes are in your bulletin this morning. They are also available outside the Moore Center. They are outside of the sanctuary, too. Our Easter offering is an opportunity to put into action our commitment to Christ and to the ministries of our church. So if you find yourself in this season able to make an extra gift to help us meet our financial needs, do know that we would be very appreciative. So please prayerfully consider whether you might be able to go just a, a step or two further uh, and to help us be faithful to our mission of loving God and loving people. Finally, we remember with prayer all of those who are hurting, all of those who are sick or recovering from sickness, those who are struggling with some other need. Especially we pray for Jay Critch and Olivia Critch in the passing of his mother and her grandmother, Lorena Critch. There's a full list of prayer needs that are printed in our monthly newsletter, but we also have physical copies of our prayer concerns on the tables outside the prayer room and outside the Moore Center. With no other announcements this morning, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for the worship of God. Let's stand together in body or in spirit for our call to worship, which you will find printed in your bulletin this morning. The story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem tells us that after his celebrated arrival, he went into the temple and looked around at everything. As we gather for worship today, may it be with a sense that Jesus has walked in too and is looking around. May our eyes be open to see him. May our hearts be ready to be seen by him. May our worship be worthy of his presence. And may we be transformed so that we see the world through his eyes. Amen. We are indeed glad to see you gathered here for worship this Lord's Day, this Palm Sunday. If you would take a hymnal, turn to hymn number 278, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Thank you.
You may be seated. This morning, as we come to our time of prayer, we will begin with just a few moments of silent prayer, and then we will hear together our opening prayer to the Lord and conclude with the Lord's Prayer together. So with oneness of spirit and of heart, let us humble ourselves before our God and Maker, and let us pray. Almighty God, for these weeks of Lent, we have been preparing for the remembrance of our Lord's suffering and death. Together, today, with the whole church, we begin this holy week by welcoming our Messiah and by readying ourselves to follow him to the cross. And so as we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem to the sounds of joyful shouts, increase our faith and listen to our prayers so that we may praise you every day by living always in Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught his disciples to pray so with confidence that we are your children we join our voices to the voices of those first disciples, and we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 9-9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled at the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helped me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The epistle lesson is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did, no, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under
under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, if our ushers will come forward, we will receive God's tithes and our offerings. Once again, let us pray. Great and glorious God, we are thankful for the opportunity to be gathered as your people in this place on this day, and we are grateful for all of the many ways that you bless us, provide for us, watch over us, and take care of us, guarding our hearts, guiding our steps, and providing for all of our needs. Lord, we thank you for your generosity toward us, and we pray that we would so receive your generosity that we would turn ourselves outward to live lives of generosity, blessing others as we have ourselves been blessed. As we come to this portion of our service of worship, where we have opportunity to share what you have gifted to us, we ask that you would open our hearts and open our hands to give freely and abundantly. Lord, bless these gifts that we share. Bless the hands that share them, that all things would be used for the uplifting and building of your kingdom. And these things we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
who will stand for the doxology. service, you stay in your seat, because <laughs> moving this many people right now might take a little while. So for our children's moment today, by the way, my name's Ryan. I'm the director of children and youth here at Springfield First. I'm just so excited to see how many of you are here all the way up in the balcony and every pew filled. I love it so much. But for our children's moment today, I want to ask a question. How many of you have a happy dance? A dance you do when something really cool happens. You have a happy dance? That's awesome. Uh, I don't have a happy dance, but Corey, my wife, says that when I'm excited about an idea, I do this. <laughs> so I guess that's my happy dance. Other people have happy dances. Football players, when they score a touchdown, they do a dance. Baseball players, when they hit home runs, sometimes they do a dance. We all do something when we're happy, even if we don't realize it. On Palm Sunday, we just walked through parading with our palms because on Palm Sunday, Jesus came to Jerusalem and he was waving, or he wasn't waving, people came to see him and wave their palms. And kind of like a touchdown dance, the waving, when they waved their palms, it was like to show a victory. Something good had happened. They were seeing Jesus, so they had to come out and stand in a crowd and maybe peek around a head or two, but they could definitely lift up their palm and wave it. Jesus was there. And so they went and saw him, and they were so excited to see Jesus. You want to know something really cool? Go ahead. You know something really cool? All right, see if you're right. We get to see Jesus every day. Now, when we see Jesus, when we see God, when we see the Holy Spirit, we don't go find our palms and whip them up and wave them because what's great about God is that we can see God at all times and in all places. So, I don't think you need to do a touchdown dance. I don't think you need to wave a palm, but I do think when we see God, we should be as excited as those people were on Palm Sunday, because they got to see God that one time. They got to see Jesus walking down the street, but we get to see Jesus in our friends and in our families and when people are kind and when people forgive us and when the sky is especially beautiful or the plants are pretty or when a tree that doesn't look like it should have leaves on it anymore all of a sudden has leaves on it again. Those are times when we get to see God and we should do a little happy dance. So we're about to hear some beautiful music. We're about to hear the Bible be read. We already did. And so I want you, while you're sitting there, find something. It doesn't have to be, like I said, a dance. It doesn't have to be waving your palms, or maybe it is. But when you really feel God and you can see God working in the people around you and the people who are singing and playing their instruments. I want you to remember that 
and maybe think about something you're going to do every time you experience God. So let's pray. And the way we pray during a children's moment is that I'll say a few words and then you'll repeat them until we finish our prayer. So let's pray. Hi, God. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being seen and bringing us joy. Help us remember to get excited when we see you. Thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ryan, for those great words and reminders. Good morning once again, church. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes to us from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11. And you will read and hear together verses 1 through 11. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we listen for the gospel of our Lord and prepare our hearts for the beautiful music that we will receive and hear. Again, it's Mark Chapter 11, beginning at verse number 1, says this. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it. And we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said. They allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it. And many people spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Nice to see you. On behalf of our music ministries, I welcome you to the presentation of the events of Palm Sunday and Holy Week. We pray that our gifts will be used to the glory of God and that you are blessed by the words spoken and sung here today.
Even as Jesus accepted the praises of those gathered along the way, he knew this road was leading him to a difficult place. Each footstep of the donkey upon which he sat took him one step closer to a day of pain, agony, and even death. Jesus was indeed riding on to die. Since the sorrow untold, as you look down the road, at the clamoring crowd drawing near. Feel the heat of the day as you look down the way. Hear the shouts of Hosanna the King. Oh, daughter of Zion, your time's drawing near. Don't forsake him, oh, don't pass it by. On the foal of a donkey, as the prophets had said, passing by you, he rides on to die. Come now, little foal, though you're not very old, Come and bear your first burden bravely. Walk so softly upon all the coats and the palms. Bear the one on your back, oh, so gently. Midst the shouting so loud and the joy of the is one who is riding in silence. For he knows the ones here will be fleeing in fear when their shepherd is taken away. Oh, daughter of Zion, your time's drawing near. Don't forsake him. Passing by you, he rides on to die. Soon the thorn cursed ground will bring forth the crown, and this Jesus will seem to be beaten. But he'll conquer alone both the shroud and the stone. And the prophecies will be completed. Oh, daughter of Zion, your time's drawing near. Don't forsake him, oh, don't pass it by. On the fall of a donkey, as the prophets had said, passing by you. On to die. On the fall of a donkey, as the prophets had said, passing by you, he rides on to die. Coming back to the city from Bethany the next day, Jesus is incensed by the fact that his father's house has become a marketplace. St. Mark records these words also in chapter 11. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves 
and he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him, because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching.
Let us turn again to Holy Scripture as we recall a sacrificial gift of love and devotion given by a follower of Jesus. From Mark chapter 14. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her.
Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with with my hands. You weren't there, but now you found me. You do not feel what I felt when he wrapped his. We are now firmly ensconced in the time leading up to Jesus' betrayal, arrest, trial, and crucifixion, a time when Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, will take upon his sacred personage the very sin and guilt of all peoples past, present, and future. As our next song asks, what language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow? thy pity without end.
Now from Mark 15, verses 33 to 39. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means... My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. What a powerful statement, a statement that has transcended the centuries as followers of Jesus have proclaimed the never failing power of his blood to redeem and restore mankind to the father.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Without form and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep. The Spirit of God hovered over this boundless expanse, a limitless vast of holy waiting. Creation on the verge of dawn, heaven pressing into earth. Let there be. God delighted, revealing, cradling dust and dirt, he breathed life into being. From the beginning, God desired to entwine human and divine, setting our mortal hearts with eternal longing. He called us his own as we walked in the garden, leaving his throne for the mud and the clay. Our deepest shame, our darkest fears could not hinder heaven's appearance. So his spirit hovered over a quiet womb, the father's seed in bloom, hope infusing the weary world. God making his way humble, coming beside us as we stumble through, a light that shines in the dark that cannot be conquered. Let there be. And so it began. The Son of God and Son of Man offered himself as the way of salvation. Jesus, man of sorrows, the Son of suffering. For oh, the perfect Son of God in all his innocence, you walk in the dirt with you. What living is, he's acquainted with our grief. A man of sorrow, son of suffering. The fullness of God in human form revealed made his dwelling among us. The covenant was sealed. Now look at him upon the cross, knowing the cost, still love inclined him to reach down and write in the dust our freedom from death and shame. With no condemnation, he proclaimed, go now and leave your life of sin. Jesus carried our sorrow. He knows our pain. Our transgressions redeemed on that rugged tree, his death, our life, and liberty. As he gave up his spirit, the earth trembled in awe, creation groaning, knowing surely this was the Son of God.
Amen. Let's stand together in body or in spirit. Let's offer one more thank offering to all of our musicians. And our reader as well. We are appreciative of them sharing their gifts and graces with us. At the conclusion of each of our services of worship, we offer an invitation to the bread and cup, to the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, waiting to see if we have the trays moving at this time. Do we have communion prepared? And it is where? There, here it is. <laughs> you need not be a member of this or any congregation to respond to this invitation because it is extended in grace. We're carried to the table by grace and fed by that same grace. Therefore, all are welcome. Loving God, pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Amen. Now receive these words of benediction and of blessing. Children of God, go forth in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.